It's Ken Harbaugh with Against All Enemies on the Midas Touch Network. I absolutely loved this conversation with Amanda Weinstein. We're both dog owners, and we discuss Christy Noem's insane story from her upcoming book about shooting a puppy, which most political observers agree was a weird attempt to impress Donald Trump in her bid to be his vice presidential nominee. Amanda, as usual, has the best insights on the politics behind all this, And best of all, at the very end of the interview, we have two additional guests on the show. You'll see what I mean. Tell us in your words why it came to that decision. I mean, unfortunately, dogs that are violent sometimes have to be put down. Um, But I guess people, because uh, you shot the dog, said, is there a difference which way you put a dog down? I'm not really sure, but I I don't think people understood it. I want to give you a chance to explain. Well, Sean, you know how the fake news works. Um, They leave out some or most of the facts of a story. They put the worst spin on it. And that's what's happened in this case. I hope people really do buy this book and they find out the truth of this story. Because the truth of the story is that this was a working dog. uh, And it was not a puppy. It was a dog that was uh, extremely dangerous. It had come to us from a family who had found her way too aggressive. We were her second chance. And she uh, was, the day she was put down was a day that she massacred livestock that were part of our neighbors. She attacked me and it was a hard decision. And the reason it's in the book is because this book is filled with tough, challenging decisions that I've had to make throughout my life. And I hope that people understand from this that what the point of this story is, is that most politicians, they will run from the truth. They will uh, shy away and hide from making tough decisions. I don't do either of those. I tell the truth and I make tough decisions. So Amanda, it is pretty obvious that Governor Nome is in damage control mode. What is just so striking about every time one of these non-apologies comes out is is the level of projection. She says she's not one to shy away from the truth. At the same time, she's completely reinventing the story that appears in the book, calling this dog, uh, saying this dog massacred uh, livestock and attacked her, uh, which didn't come across in the first telling of the story. Oh, no, not at all. And in the first telling of the story, it was like, eh, the dog was untrainable. So I shot it. I shot the puppy. And that was the story. And honestly, it took quite a while for her to figure out, well, what other details can I add? So it doesn't sound quite as bad because it turns out she thought that, oh, you know, this is just how we do things in rural America. This is how we do things in MAGA GOP land. And no one in MAGA GOP land came to her defense. (laughs) Everyone was like, nope, this isn't how we do things. Uh, And she had to figure out like, all right, what details do I add in there? So it kind of sounds a little better. How can I backtrack so that people understand? I don't question that she she probably did this. She took a 14 month old dog that wasn't a good hunting dog. She dragged it to a gravel pit and she (laughs) puppy and she shot it. Um, What what surprises me and I would really love your thoughts on this is why she thought that was the kind of story that embellished her bio and didn't make her look like a monster, because that has much more to tell us about the state of the GOP today, and especially the state of the people trying to win Trump's favor. Because make no mistake, this book is an audition for VP. She blew the audition, but that's what it was envisioned as originally. Why does a story like this seem like a good idea in today's GOP? A hundred percent. I think that's a story people aren't talking about. This says so much about what she thinks about MAGA voters, about what she thinks about the GOP, about what she thinks about Trump. She thinks they are puppy killers, cold blooded puppy killers. And that's how she's going to get their vote. That's how they're going to think they're cool. I have never heard any Democrat say anything as ruthless about GOP voters, as Christy Nome said, in thinking this story would connect with GOP voters. You know, it reminds me, and this is of the same piece, of the audition that J.D. Vance and Josh Mandel and other Senate candidates in Ohio during the last cycle had to engage in down at Mar-a-Lago when Josh Mandel, according to reports, says, uh, Mr. Trump, I'm your guy. I'm a killer. And he used those words. I'm a killer. And 
so I, I think you're on to something with this idea that that ruthlessness, that willingness to be brutal is part of the Republican brand today. Absolutely. It's part of the brand, but this level of ruthlessness does not match with their own voters. They like, I just can't imagine the extreme. And also like, wasn't it not too long ago where Mitt Romney was lambasted for putting his dog on his roof of the car for a car trip? Like, oh my gosh, that was in there for days. We all thought that was terrible, right? His own side wasn't coming to his defense either. We've come so far that she can shoot her puppy and think that now that this is okay, when it wasn't that long ago where we didn't even think it was okay to put your dog on the car to take him on vacation with you. Like, she thinks GOP voters have come much farther than they have. They are so used to the extreme rhetoric that they will go to these lengths that do not match even MAGA voters. Well, it's because they have to outdo each other, right? It is all a an internal competition. You have Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to one up each other. You have all of these potential candidates for Trump's VP pick trying to outdo one another. This certainly outdid the field in this category of brutality, but maybe there's something about cruelty to animals that fin finally shakes uh, voters out of their out of their complacency. Before you respond to that, I, I just have to acknowledge that we're talking about this. We're we've spilled so much ink in the mainstream media talking about this uh, this 14 month old dog that was shot in the in the case of a governor whose state is literally brutalizing women by denying them health care. Let's just acknowledge that sick contrast, um, react to it if you want. But this says so much about the need for prominent people within the GOP to outdo each other. Oh yeah, it's like a crazy MAGA beauty pageant where it's all fake, right? We know in beauty pageant, like they're taping body parts and spray painting stuff. And there's like spray glue on their butt. This is essentially what they're doing for politics is it is all fake, right? They are trying to paint this personality that will somehow speak to MAGA voters, that will somehow speak to the GOP. And they think that this version of like spray glue on their butt, in this case, you know, shooting a puppy is going to connect with Trump and his voters. And it was a swing and a miss here. So they're trying, she's trying to figure out like, how do I recover from this? And I don't think she can. No, I don't think she can. And I think the reason is it ultimately boils down to character. Uh, people misspeak all the time. Lord knows uh, the, the president, Joe Biden, does all the time. But there's a understanding that at his core, he's a decent human being. And those missteps are not a reflection of who truly is. In this case, I think people deep down think that this is a reflection of who Christy Noem uh, really is. And speaking of fake, there's there's another story in the book that has just been debunked by Governor Noem's own, own team. She claims to have met with Kim Jong-un uh, and stared him down. And her spokesperson just had to confirm that that never happened and they have never met. <laughs> Uh, I, isn't Trump like a big fan of Kim Jong-un? Like, isn't that like a, was that like her way of saying like, hey, we're friends too, but like in a way where I'm also tough. I don't get that. I don't get like half of the stuff they're saying is just ridiculous. And it has nothing to do with how you will lead us, you know, as a leader, as a policymaker, as someone who is figuring out how our country should make its way. I'm really not sure how this fake GOP pageant is going to tell us how we're going to fix real issues. As you mentioned, women miscarrying in the bathrooms of hospitals, women bleeding to death and dying of sepsis. None of this seems to fix any of the issues that people are actually faced with and are asking real questions about right now. Thanks for watching, everyone. I have been so humbled by the support of this audience and the speed at which this show has grown. You are why I and the whole team here do this. If you're interested in bonus content, check out my Patreon page. It's free to sign up and there's an option to donate as well. The link is right there and in the show notes. Thanks again.
I want you to indulge in a a moment of self reflection and and self criticism, um, because I I always try to double check myself when we when we do a story like this about a dog in a state where women can't get health care. There is some utility. Please tell me if I'm wrong in calling out the uh, the excesses of someone like Christy Nome, even when it's a dog we're talking about, right? This is, this is a distraction in a sense, but it is also revelatory in a, in a way that gets at the bigger picture. It does. There's a cruelty there. And I think there is something, it is a cruelty that doesn't match up with the American people. It just doesn't. We are a dog loving country. I get it. Not everyone out there is a dog owner. We're also cat loving country, right? Or we're like a no pet. That's fine. But generally we're, you know, we're pretty known for our, our dog loving country. And there is a connection we have to those animals in a way that I think most families kind of respect that connection, right? What she is showing is a level of cruelty that does not match with the American people where the American people are saying, when we think about this country, you have the flag behind you. When we think about America, we don't want cruelty to be our brand. Does it mean we have always held up that brand to a highest standard? Probably not. But I think we would all know that the American ideals, cruelty is not one of them. Yeah. Well, um, those who've been watching this show for a while understand where where I come from on this. I am a, a dog owner, a dog lover, and my... Uh, my best friend, I have to spell his name or else he'll wake up, uh, A-R-C-H-I-E, sits with me for every show. People are going to get to see behind the camera here. We call this Archie's uh, Soft Land. And I'm going <laughs> to... Folks can see that. Hey, Archie. Archie, say hi He's to like, Amanda. Yeah. yeah, there he is. Um, all right. Archie and I <laughs> are both uh, very grateful for your time. And as always your insight and your wisdom. Thank you so much, Amanda. And you're a dog lover too, right? We've had a a wagging tail in the background in the past. Oh yes, I've had, actually the wagging tail you typically see is a pointer. And let me tell you those hunting dogs, I will say are hard to train, but they have some other qualities. you don't shoot them. (laughs) I don't shoot them, right? I love them. Oh, there they are speaking up right now. They're like, please don't shoot us. We have other strong suits. It might not be for hunting uh, or whatever you want to use us for. And we have a lot of opportunities to do other things for you, which we love our puppies very much. Uh, Xander and Daisy that you just heard right there, letting me know someone's probably walking by my house. Thank you so much, Amanda. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Ken. And thanks, Archie. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.